Welcome back everyone, it's Hefenhusa57 here. I hope everyone's chilling and having a good time. I'm back on Neverwinter on the Xbox One with yet another guide for you. So today I will be showing you how to farm Von in Blood, or Vi in Blood, whatever you want to call it, basically fast and easy, or pretty much as fast and easy as you can do it. So, first of all, let's take a look at the currency. I'm going to go ahead and show you I don't have a whole lot of it uh, because if you're new, you know, uh, this is the currency that you need for the Storm King's Thunder campaign as well as for restoring relic gear and all of that. And a lot of people said, oh, to hell with this currency because it's literally not easy to obtain or most people did not figure that it was easy to obtain. But I've been using this uh, technique for a while. It's not necessarily cheap, and the reason why I recommend it is because of the fact that just for the boons alone, you need a shit ton of Von and Blood. The last boon by itself requires 21,000. Not to mention you need it for the Storm King's Thunder campaign, and you also need it to restore any of your relic gear. And you need tens of thousands of it. So... It's not a simple process. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get several items. As you can see, you see my little buddy there, Mr. Fire and Ice. He's a Remoraz or Remoraz, however you want to pronounce it. That's up to you. And you can find that companion in the Tarmaloon Trade House or the Zen Market. Now, this is going to be pretty much, in my opinion, the fastest way outside of the Sea of Moving Ice. Now this little guy costs 2500 zen and he does come with a lesser bonding stone and your choice of the basically uh, raid cap, in any of the words you get uh, a piece of frost burn gear. You get the frost burn headwear pack with it and you get to choose what piece you want. Which is really, really good because you're going to need a piece of Frostburn gear. However, if you don't have the 2500 Zen, you can simply look up that companion on the Tarmaloon Trade House. Go to Companions. All you have to do is type in RE, uh, select Companions, and Epic. Now, this will work on any of uh, the platforms. I'm on the Xbox One, but it will work on any of them. And you're going to have to scroll down because the Remoraz is kind of low on the list for buyout. Right now, they're going for about 385000 They go up and down along with the price of Zen, so just keep that in mind. But I would highly recommend that you pick up one. If you buy it off at the Tarmaloon Trade House, you're not going to get the lesser bonding and you're not going to get the piece of Frostborn gear. Or, and uh, basically, you need one piece of Frostburn and I'm going to go ahead and show you why. So the reason why you want the Remoraz, and this guy is worth it, you're going to want to get him leveled up as well. He comes at Epic, so train him up to rank 30 or above, and he has Excavate. Whenever you dig up a relic, the Remoraz buries underground in search of an additional relic with a 20% chance of success. The rarity depends on the base chance for you to find rare relics. If you get him to level 30, that chance is doubled. So it's basically a 40% chance. Then you want to use a single piece of the frost burn gear. And the reason why you want to use that is if you go and look at the stats, wearing a single piece of it when digging for Asterian relics, there's a 25% chance that you'll obtain additional relic. So basically, you're rolling three chances every single time. Now, the Remoraz, for this to work, does have to be your summoned companion. So, normally, like, I'd use my mercenary. Well, unfortunately, you have to have him summoned. He is a pretty cool-looking companion, though. Uh, except when he's half of his tail hanging through the roof. Normally, you don't see all of the Remoraz, but as you can see up there, you know, that's all of them. So, last but not least... You're going to need two other items. You're going to need the Excavator's Potion of Everfrost Resistance, which you get one by starting the campaign. You can also buy more from the campaign store or off of the Tarmaloon Trade House. You'll need one. It lasts for one hour, and it increases the chances of discovering relics. 
then you'll need one last item. That item is potentially the most expensive part, and that's the master's trial. Now, this is where it's a bit personal preference. If you don't have the Zen for it or you don't want to buy it, it's okay. I'll show you an alternate way to use it but, or to get it, but this is the best option for you. Now, you get one of these trials, and it increases the chance to find higher quality relics and the chance to find epic quality relics. Without that trial, it's very hard to find the epic quality relics. So what you're going to do to get that trial is go to the Zen Market, and it's very simple to find. It's actually under Items, and it's the Master's Trial. It costs a thousand Zen. You can also buy it off of the Tarmaloon Trade House. Now that you've got all that done, you want to move your piece of Frostburn gear to your very first bag slot. So the moment you open your inventory, it'll be right there, and you can simply press A twice and equip it. Because remember, that gear has a combat timer on it. Next, you want to come to Bryn Shander. And you want to make sure that you have about an hour to do this. So it does take a little bit of time. Now you're going to look for ideally a low pop instance. There's a big argument about whether you want to go to the highest population instance or the lowest population instance um, because the relics can spawn in the middle of heroic encounters and if you're by yourself you're going to have to go around them. Personally I go for the lowest pop instance so I don't have to deal with people taking my relics. Now there is not a predetermined like specific spawn sequence for relics. So what you're going to do is equip your piece of frostburn gear, have your remoraz summoned or remoraz, whatever you want to call it, and then you're going to want to take that excavator's potion of everfrost resist. Now you can see that I've been doing this for 1 hour. I have 78 green relics, 75 white relics, 20 purple relics and 33 blue relics. I'll show you how much all of that's going to give me here towards the end of the video. Right now, I just want to show you how to actually do this. So first, go ahead and set your chat to log. The reason why you want to set your chat to log is you actually want to see when you get a relic. Now, once you've used that potion, your next step is to go and hunt for the relics. The reason why you come to Bryn Shander is it's one of the easier places to spot the relics. And this might take a time or two to get used to because you're going to have to actually look for them. And they're going to look out of place. Uh, they tend to render in a little bit faster than everything else. So they're sometimes easy to spot, sometimes not so much. Also, if you have an epic mount and you have the guild boon for mount speed, you're going to want to use it because the faster you can cover the map, the more relics you're going to get before that potion wears off. So right now, I don't know if any of you can spot the relic. Any relics around me? There's actually one. It's right there, right where my cursor is, the middle of my screen, basically. And you see how they look kind of odd? They're basically going to be like squares pillars, things like that, and I bet you almost anything there's a relic right here. Alright, so you run over to it, interact with it, the Remoraz is going to dig, and you'll see in the chat it says I've received a relic, and then the Remoraz is going to pop up, and in the chat it'll be the Remoraz did not find anything and seems disappointed. So, as soon as that message pops up, you are free to get back on your mount and ride away. Now there is a little bit of glitchiness when using the Remoraz because you can actually get too far away from the companion and then he won't dig for another relic. And he also has a ridiculous aggro radius. Everything in this zone wants to kill you and wants to kill you very quickly. So be careful again with that. Um, you can easily pull stuff that you don't wish to pull and you just kind of have to search up and down on the map. Some people will tell you to go from top to bottom. Some people will tell you to go left to right. In my opinion, it honestly does not make a difference. Just do your best to avoid mobs and heroic encounters. Once you've done this a little bit, you'll learn where the relics spawn, and it'll be easier for you to collect them. But you can see, especially... Uh, like on my screen, there's no relics around right now. You want to try and stay on the high ground because that'll give you a better vantage point to find relics. 
And see, like, there's one right there in front of me. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. I'm just going to grab a couple of these just to show you. But they'll literally spawn throughout the map. So as soon as you get the relic, you can get back on your mount. And, of course, he didn't find anything. Now, that message will pop up and say you have received two relics. If your Frostborn or Frostburn, whatever you want to call it, piece of gear found another relic for you say hi to uh king shit over there um just kidding he's one of the sightseeing tours uh plus people can be taking your relics i think that guy right there is doing a little bit of relic farming himself so you do have to watch out for that they can spawn at the edges of the map it is possible for that to happen so just kind of keep your wits about you because they can be in all different places. They can be down here in the little trenches. They can be up on the hillsides. They can be literally all over the place. Um, and I'm just going to find a couple more relics. Like right there, there's another relic. And you're looking for what looks out of place. Uh, basically what looks man-made. So straight lines... Uh, jagged, a little bit darker around the edges, that type of stuff. Now you've seen in chat, it said, I received two relics. That's because I received one from my frost burn uh, piece, one from my gear. So again, always try and take the high ground if you can and try and avoid groups of enemies so you don't reduce the combat time on your piece of gear. Uh, Remember, the Remoraz might not seem like it, like it's worth it right now because you've literally only seen me search a few things, yet he hasn't pulled up anything at all, which is kind of just, you know, the way it is. But he will find stuff for you. Now, also what you can do while you're here, if you're down and you see one of these named bosses, quickly kill them. And they will drop you an item that you can pick up and then go into your inventory and accept the quest. And that'll give you 50 of the uh, Vaughn and Blood. Now, that's not really how we're primarily going to be farming. Just make sure that it's not a heroic encounter. Like, those enemies up there are heroic encounters. So stay away from them if you're by yourself. But uh, it's just one thing that I do to obtain a little bit extra Vaughn and Blood for the amount of time that I'm here. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is learn the aggro distance of enemies in this zone. You will see that I cannot get that relic without aggroing these yetis. There's no way for me to do it. And there's a lot of relics that they spawn right next to where the enemies are. So of course I'm not doing as much damage as I would be normally because I don't have my striker companion and my bondings out. So, yeah, keep that in mind. And of course, you want to switch back to your frost gear. And, of course, my poor little Remoraz has not found an artifact yet. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand in that quest that I just got, and I'm going to make my way up towards where I turned in these relics. If my Remoraz finds a relic, so be it. If he doesn't, so be it as well. Ah, now you see he found a relic. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're close to him. Because if you get too far away from the Remoraz, you will not get that relic. Just keep that in mind. Um, the Remoraz can be slow. Like right over there, he's not moving as quickly. So you can go into your companions, dismiss him, and summon him again. And he'll be right there, right next to you. So if you've moved a long distance that's the easiest way to get the remoras to you but that's what i like to do see it just found another relic and then of course you can switch off to whatever chat you want to after that uh complete and total personal preference if you even want to have the log chat on it goes by really quick i just like to have it on because i know when to move and when not to move some other people have done guides or suggested different ways of farming this Vaughn in blood, but uh, I haven't seen another guide that is this completely in depth, so that's why I wanted to make the video for you. Now what you're gonna do 
at this point, I'm assuming that you've spent an hour or you spent your half an hour, whatever. The reason why I say an hour is because the potion lasts for an hour, so you might as well spend that full use of the potion since you bought it. And we're gonna get one last little relic right here because it's uh, next to where we have to go in to turn in stuff. So make sure I have my piece of gear on. Go ahead and check real quick. It's gonna be our last relic, so I'll put my gear, switch that back up for storage purposes. And the Remoras did not find anything. So yeah, a little bit disappointing. Like I mentioned before, it can be expensive to get set up because you need this for every character that you're gonna worry about getting relic gear on. And you don't have to necessarily have the master's trowel. You can actually buy a green trowel that has 30 uses. If you come over here to the campaign store and you started the campaign, you can buy the archeologist trowel. Now I have this fully discounted. So for me, it's only 100 Vaughn in blood and the potion is only 600 Vaughn in blood, which is very, very cheap, very cheap, but personal preference. I like to have the master's trial just to have the fullest extent benefit I possibly can. Now let's see after an hour's worth of hard work, how much Vaughn in blood I got. You can see all the relics that I have down there. So a uh, quick check. Let me show you how much I have now. Uh, before I turn it in 2700 let's just call it 2700 because I'm not worried about the other 20 so 2700 and it takes a minute you can manually enter the number but it only goes up to 20 sadly very stupid that way but that's the way it is so that's a thousand and it does, it takes you a minute to actually go through and sell all your relics. It's kind of crazy that it does, but it takes you a minute. Now let's sell the green ones. Again, it can only go up to 20. And those are worth 2,000 a piece, or 2,000 per set of 20. I really wish there was a sell all option though. Now the blue relics. sell all of them. Now the purple relics, all 20 of them. 10,000 Vaughn and Blood just from the purple relics. Now let's look at how much I had. I now have 33,270. I had 2,700. Call it 3,000 if you will. I made 30,000. 30,000 Vaughn and Blood off of an hour's worth of work. And technically... You could maybe make more the more familiar with the map you are and if you don't take the time to keep switching on and off that Frostborn piece. If you don't mind using the combat timer on it, then yeah, you have even more, even more time. Um, it's just personal preference whether you want to do that or not. So I would say if you got really lucky, you could make... 40,000 Vaughn in blood in an hour and if you had really really crappy luck like you weren't using the potion and you didn't have the master's trial you'd maybe only get 20,000 blood but you're going to get at least 20,000 to 30,000 blood like right now I have enough blood that if I had the rest of the material I could restore both pieces of my gear I could do the final boon if I wanted to and I had the other things it's just it basically renders the hardship of trying to get Vaughn in blood and worry about Vaughn in blood literally null and void. You don't have to worry about it anymore. It's super easy to do with only a couple hours worth of actual work. So I know the video was a little bit longer. I hope that you all enjoyed it and you'll go ahead and give the video a like, comment, share, and subscribe. It greatly helps out with the searchability of videos here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitch and Facebook if you need to get in contact with me when I am not online. Until next time, happy farming, stay frosty.